before we get into the rest of the video, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Hub and turn on all notifications to stay up to date with everything in the world of pro wrestling. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Wrestling Hub Official and follow us on Twitter at Wrestling underscore Hub. Wall of the Sun reported that WWE is talking about plans of a Hall of Fame induction for Vince McMahon. Ringside News has reported that there is a lot of talk going around about Vince McMahon's WWE Hall of Fame induction. We've asked about this and nobody we've spoken to has heard anything about it. Those choices aren't typically made until November. Speaking on the MMA Hour, MJF talked about AEW President Tony Khan feeling attacked by WWE booking shows during their recent All Out event. And you have to understand that Tony Khan felt personally attacked at that point. And you can't blame him. WWE, once they find out they're doing a pay-per-view at this time of the year, all of a sudden, magically, there's two pay-per-views. And again, totally understandable. If I was on the other side of the fence, I would be doing five pay-per-views on the same day. Again, his back was against the wall. He felt pressurized. During that same interview, MJF touched on signing a new deal with AEW as he did not have his contract extended. It's still January 2024. If you watch the NFL, I do believe there's a guy who was in a similar situation who felt he deserved more money. They gave him more money without a contract extension. Who wouldn't want to sign me a contract extension? When asked why he didn't sign an extension, he said because right now I am the number one contender to the AEW world title. If I win the title, what is more bargaining power in the world than having the most important championship in your hands. So when January 1st, 2024 rolls around, the devil goes to the highest bidder. With all the backstage drama in AEW, former WWE referee Mike Chioda spoke on his Monday mailbag about the president of the company's leadership. Tony Khan is the leader. It doesn't seem like he leads. He doesn't need to be on every podcast. He needs to be behind the scenes more. While Kevin Nash called out those involved in the AEW backstage brawl, he would say this regarding the suspensions for those talent in the fight on his podcast. You're 1099s. You know what that means? That means you were painting somebody's house and you guys got into a fight and they told you you're all suspended. So they're the cop that shoots the guy 23 times in the back and sits at his desk? That's an effective way to manage. What a bunch of sh- Mentioning how he thought about quitting AEW on his vlog, Sammy Guevara revealed, Maybe I should go away. Maybe this is it for me. I had a nice ride. And maybe I need to go away to get y'all to appreciate me. Because that's what you guys do. That's what you did to Cody. While he was in AEW, you hated him, and then he went to WWE, and you guys love him now. So I thought in my mind, man, that maybe this is it for me. I'm not even talking about, you know, going somewhere else. I'm just tired. Maybe I just need to take a break in general. When talking to News 12 about the surplus in AEW events, president of the company Tony Khan would end up taking a shot at WWE's deal with Saudi Arabia. We're running a lot of great shows around the Northeast. It's so many great wrestling markets in one geographic region. I'll say it, the crown jewel of wrestling markets, the real crown jewel of wrestling markets, not some BS overseas in Saudi Arabia. New York City is where you want to be, and I love, love, love New York. And as a wrestling fan, I've had a special connection to the city. Some of my first memories of watching sporting sports in New York, or watching the Bulls and the Knicks, and watching the Bears and the Giants. But really, for me, wrestling has been my first love, so as a sports fan, you can't be a wrestling fan without loving New York City, without having this great connection to the fans up here. Khan would also talk about the upcoming AEW Grand Slam event, saying, yeah, big time. It's gonna be really special. You don't wanna miss this one. If there's still opportunity for you to come out Wednesday night, and you're a wrestling fan around New York, you do not wanna miss this. It is going to be, I believe, have you guys seen Wayne's World 2? This is gonna be my Wayne stock. I've been through a lot lately, and we've...
gone through a lot. I'm telling you, it's going to come together. This is going to be like Wayne Stock. It's going to be that one perfect night in New York City this Wednesday night. Expect a lot, and you shall not be disappointed. I'm going to do my best, make it a fun night for the fans. I promise I won't disappoint with it this time. I rarely have, and rarely, rarely, rarely in several hundred shows have I ever, and certainly never intentionally. This will not be anything, anything, anything like anything we've ever done before. I'm very excited for Grand Slam. When speaking on the In The Click podcast, Khan would note that he is hoping to get a TV deal for ROH. If we can get the weekly TV going again, it would be even stronger. So wherever it ends up TV streaming, I'd love to bring Ring of Honor back on a weekly basis, and it's a conversation I'm having with Warner Brothers Discovery pretty frequently. When asked about rumors of NBC Universal and WBD merging, Khan said, I could definitely not speculate on that, and I would never speculate on that. I'm very happy with what we have right now. We have this great leadership from Discovery that's come in and taken over, working with great management from Warner Brothers, and now we have this really strong company, Warner Brothers Discovery, that is the single largest creative content in the world, and they're showcasing AEW greater than we ever have been showcased before. On Rock 105.3, the show, Tony Khan was asked what he was thinking when CM Punk went on his rant at the media scrum falling all out as he said, I can't really comment on any of that. I'm not going to comment again on that, but I will say that MJF's return has been a massive needle mover for AEW and has generated a ton of interest. Having MJF back on Dynamite has been great. There's another reason why we've seen a great ratings bump. He's a great star and a huge part of AEW. On his podcast, Nature Boy Ric Flair noted how Ricky Steamboat is getting back in the ring and how that's inspired him to potentially return to action once more. It's one of those deals where nobody's ever going to be Ricky Steamboat, so they might as well watch him while they can and enjoy the opportunity, because there never will be another Ricky Steamboat. At every level, he's better than 50% of the guys in the business today, and he wouldn't get in the ring if he wasn't. He holds himself to a very high standard, and I imagine he'll probably look better than the guys he's in the ring with because he's always in good shape. Steamboat coming back makes me want to come back again. I went back up to Lincoln and started training again. What else is there to do? Talking about his history of concussions in the pro wrestling business, Kurt Angle said on his podcast, I would say I probably had four concussions that I know of major. One was a slight concussion that wasn't too bad. The other three were pretty bad. But you know, even to this day, I'm starting to not remember things, you know, and I'm only in my early 50s. But I've gotten a little damage to my brain. There's no doubt about it. You know, my memory is not that great anymore. I really have to think hard about remembering the past. Recalling his concussion from SummerSlam 2000, he said, they kept that quiet until after I wrestled Triple H. I believe they told told me two weeks prior to No Mercy, which would have been two weeks after the match I had with Triple H, but I was surprised. I mean, literally, I wasn't winning any matches in five months, and all of a sudden, they're going to give me the title. What Vince McMahon told me was, it wasn't just about me elevating myself through the company that year. It was the fact that I came back with a concussion and wrestled at SummerSlam against Triple H and The Rock. Vince really gave me a lot of respect for that. He wanted to repay me for coming back and finishing that match when I shouldn't have finished it. So he was telling me, like, listen, I have a real player now. I know I can depend on this guy because because he literally got a concussion and he still wrestled with it. So I'm going to put the title on this kid because I believe in him. Randy Orton's iconic tattoos are center stage of a lawsuit against WWE and company with the artist of those tats looking for compensation. In an update on this, PW Insider has said, WWE star Randy Orton is scheduled as a witness in the trial for the lawsuit as tattoo artist Katherine Alexander has brought against World Wrestling Entertainment, Take-Two Interactive Software, 2K Games Inc., 2K Sports Inc., Visual Concepts Entertainment, Ukes Co., and Ukes LA, before the U.S. District Court, Southern District of Illinois. Alexander claims to have done the work between 03 and saying she applied for a copyright in March of 2018. Talking about Tony Khan taking a jab at WWE's deal with Saudi Arabia, Booker T said on his Hall of Fame podcast, worry about your company. Worry about the turmoil that's going on inside of AEW right now, and try to fix that before you start thinking about what WWE is doing, and instead of running his mouth about WWE. I have a lot of respect for Tony Khan. Sometimes you earn respect as well. You don't earn it by going out there talking. You earn it by going out there and doing it. I think I would have a whole lot more respect for Tony Khan if he handled his business. And we all know what that is. We saw the press conference. 
conference. Yeah, as I said, I don't get it. There's a lot of upside about AEW. Just like Chris Jericho was talking at that press conference, some things are better kept to ourselves instead of blowing up WWE, especially without WWE is rolling right now. With WBC heavyweight boxing champion Tyson Fury getting involved in WWE's Clash at the Castle of Vin in Cardiff, Wales, Triple H spoke to SportingNews.com about Fury's future in the company. I think Tyson Fury is chomping at the bit to get in the ring. The question is, which ring will he get into? Is it going to be the boxing ring or is it going to be the WWE ring? We were just together in Cardiff. We had a long talk about it. He's as enamored as ever and wanting to do this with us. I think he knows he's got a few big fights left in him in the boxing world. I think he's going to capitalize on those fights as you were hearing. Selfishly, I want him to come work with us. Also selfishly, I want to see those fights. I hope he knocks those out, and I hope he stays interested because I do think, with the dedication and the drive he has, that he could do something special with us as well. Talking about his time as a part of D-Generation Next in WWE, Triple H revealed a sports bible that Vince McMahon threatened to fire him every week due to the explicit nature of the DX segments on Raw. We said, let us take the letter and use it on TV. Vince McMahon was like, in what way? I said, we will make it into a comedy routine. He was like, alright, make sure it's funny. But he's got a pretty warped sense of what's funny, so it's alright. We did like a presidential podium and the three of us got up there as if Shawn Michaels was president and we were standing behind him. We went through the list of words and they bleeped the words we weren't allowed to say. We said, this is direct from US say we in D Generation X apologize for our attitudes, we will no longer say the words. And we went through the list. The next day we got a letter from USA that said congratulations on the ratings last night. What DX did with our letter was hilarious. Congratulations on the success. Here's to many more years. On his Oh You Didn't Know podcast, Road Dog called out AEW for letting talent run the show. I think as far as AEW go, you could for dang sure put on really good show on Friday night if you wanted to, Road Dog said, noting that AEW should be utilizing what he describes as Wednesday night talents, as the two hours provided by Dynamite isn't quite enough for the growing list of marquee talents. I just don't think they use theirs wisely. The inmates can only run the asylum for so long, and that's how I feel about that. Sticking with AEW's Grand Slam from last night, The Observer also touched on the status of Wardlow following the event, saying Wardlow appeared to be hurt. I don't know how serious. He appeared to have a leg injury, but he did come back and do all the power bombs on Mark Sterling. Speaking of CM Punk, Wade Keller, PW Torch, noted how Punk's name was not mentioned when Ian Riccoboni recalled notable ROH title holders. I think this is noteworthy, but not surprising that he excluded CM Punk's name as he talked about some of the biggest names who have held the title. That's a bit of a tell. As I talked with Jason Powell yesterday about, I'm not expecting CM Punk to wrestle in AEW again. I'm not saying it's a 100% sure thing, but everything is pointing in the direction of some sort of buyout of his contract. We'll learn more eventually about that situation. With Aaliyah out of action with an injury, Shotzi Blackheart has replaced her as the tag team partner of Raquel Rodriguez, which makes Shotzi a babyface. It was noted by The Observer that Aaliyah's injury wasn't considered serious at press time as she's listed to return next week. Her injury was mentioned in passing on television without saying what it was. Reacting to Malachi Black's statement after announcing his departure from AEW, Jim Cornette accused the company of messing with the star. He's speaking in circles and riddles, but if he has had private issues go on in his life, that is terrible. But everybody else does too, right? If that has caused him to want to step away from his current employment, then that is fine too. But I think it may be a lot more of it is he might want to stay there at something he obviously chose to do and enjoys doing unless they were in his mind screwing him around or messing it up some kind of way. Speaking of black, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter pointed out that WWE did make contact with the stars. They said, what we do know is that black was one of the people WWE reached out to even though he had signed a five-year deal with AEW. It was even noted that black was not the only person to ask for his release at the time.
Touching on the backstage turmoil in AEW, Chris Jericho told GQ that the company won't stop even if wrestlers leave following the brawl it all out. Without getting into specifics, it happens all the time. That's one of the things about being around as long as I have. You just recalibrate and you focus on the positives and realize we got a great locker room, a great group of guys and girls. I think we re-established that on TV the last few weeks. We know this is a pretty social place and we're going to go out there and we're going to kill it. That's what we did. It's a reset and that's exciting for everybody involved, including me. We're just going to keep building upon it. That's what you do. That's how you have longevity. I bet you the Edmonton Oilers were terrified when Wayne Gretzky left and they won a Stanley Cup that year. That's just how it goes when somebody leaves. Somebody else steps up. That's the best thing about wrestling or pro sports or even SNL. Adam Sandler leaves and suddenly Jason Sudeikis is the big name or whatever. So absolutely, we're not going to miss a beat. We're going to go on and become bigger and better and stronger than ever. Staying on the topic of the backstage brawl that took place after All Out, Ronda Rousey questioned the legitimacy of the altercation on her stream, saying, Was there a real fight? Everything is all hearsay. I don't know what to say. I wasn't there when it happened. I know I didn't see it. Are you sure it's not, you know, a work? Despite making her debut for AEW during Dynamite this week, Soraya is supposedly not cleared for in-ring action, as The Observer noted. There is no answer to the question as to what role she will play, if she will wrestle regularly, sparingly, or not at all. She got an enormous surprise pop, but these types of things always get that reaction. Muda got a similar gigantic pop. Pops and surprises are cool, but their long-term value is nil if they cost a lot of money. If she is going to wrestle and can go at her prior level, she will be a good addition, but it was notable in her Running, she didn't touch anyone, and with WWE, not only was she not allowed to wrestle, but nobody was allowed to touch her. We were told that she had not been cleared as of very recently, which would explain not touching anyone, but would like to be cleared. She is refereeing for her family's WAW promotion in a few weeks. of Jericho, he talked to GQ magazine recently about still being able to go in the ring at his age, saying, I always say that when I lose a match, people think it's the best match. When I win a match, suddenly it's a 51-year-old Jericho holding down the young guys. And you know, I don't mind. I'm 51. I'm not ashamed of it. I've had 32 great years. But man, if I can reinvent myself and maybe have four or five more years wrestling at the highest of levels, why not do it? With him recovering from his torn pec following surgery, Cody Rhodes talked to TMZ Sports about being given a potential timeline and joked about making a rushed return to in-ring action. They know I'm stupid, and I try to test it. I got in my mind where I want to be, and I think a lot of fans have in their minds where I'd like to be, and that's hopefully where it's at. They've treated me like the house that built me, and honestly, it was amazing. We were back, and everything was rolling so fast, and then I tore my pec. It was like the best three months of my life. Hopefully, get back to that soon. And this was your pro wrestling news update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you later.